next video, I'm going to show you some questions on inverse variation. Sometimes the question could be worded like this, where it says varies inversely, or it might say inversely proportional, but they mean exactly the same thing. In this question, it says B varies inversely as E. So it's very similar to the questions on direct proportion and variation, except this time, instead, when we write that funny symbol, so B is proportional to E, we write it as 1 over E instead. So whenever it's inversely, you need to remember to write the second letter as the denominator and 1 goes on top. So this means B is inversely proportional to, or it varies inversely, to E. Now, just as before, like in those other questions in variation, you need to turn this into a real equation with an equal sign. So when you change that symbol to an equal sign, you need to include a constant, which we usually call k. And k is the numerator in this equation. So to find k, you need to substitute in the values given in the beginning of the question. So b is 6 and e is 2. So I'm going to change those values. And then I can work out k. Well, something divided by 2 gives me 6, so k must be 12, because 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I found my value of k, the constant. So that means I can write down the full equation connecting b and e. Remember, k is the numerator. So if we substitute that number into this equation, we get b equals 12 over e. So this is the equation connecting b and e. So we can use this to work out parts A and B in this question. So in part A, it tells us the value of E, and using that value 12, we have to work out B. So you just replace E with 12 in this equation. So B is equal to 12 over 12. So I'm just changing that value underneath. So 12 divided by 12 is 1. So I found the first part to the question in part A. Okay, now on to the next bit. It says find the value of E when B is 3. So the same as before, we're going to use this equation connecting B and E, except this time we need to change the value of B to 3. So over here, this becomes 3. Everything else stays the same. So 12 divided by something gives me the 3. So that something, the E value, must be 4 because 12 divided by 4 is 3. So E is 4. On to the next example. Okay, so here's another inversely proportional question. Okay, P is inversely proportional to the square root of Y. So that means it will be written like this. P is inversely proportional to the square root of Y. Remember, 1 is the numerator and the second part here, the square root of Y, is the denominator. So again, the first step is to find an equation. So we need to change that symbol to an equal sign. But when we do that, that number one now needs to be written as a constant, which we call k. So I'm going to call that k. Everything else stays the same. So to find that constant k, I need to substitute in the information given at the beginning of the question. So we know that when p is 1.2, y is 100. So I need to substitute those two values into this equation. So I'm going to change p to 1.2, and I'm going to change that y value, not forgetting my square root, to 100. So now I need to solve this equation to find k. Well, the square root of 100 is 10, because 10 squared is 100. So that can be written as k over 10. So if I want to solve this equation, but k is being divided by 10. The opposite is to multiply by 10. So I'm going to multiply by 10 on both sides, and that will give me the value of k. So when I multiply this side by 10, it gives me 12. So the value of k is just 12. So now we can write down the full equation, connecting p and y. So here's the equation here, but now we know the value of k, so we can substitute that in. So p is equal to 12 over the square root of y. So we're going to use that equation throughout our question to answer parts a and b. So in part a, 
It tells us to find the value of P when Y is 4. So you need to change your value of Y to 4 over here. So P is equal to 12 over the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that's the answer in part A. We found the value of P, which is 6. All right, on to part B. Use that equation again, okay, the one I've highlighted here. So let's write that out again. Except this time we're finding the value of y and we're told the value of p is 3. So this time you're replacing p with the number 3. And now we need to solve this equation. So I need to work out the value of y. I know that 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. So this denominator must be equal to 4. So I'm going to put the square root of y equal to 4. Now, there's a couple of ways of thinking of the solution here of y. You could say what number when you square root it gives you 4. Or you could just square both sides. So when I square both sides of this equation, it gets rid of the square root on the left hand side. And when I square the right hand side, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which, which is 16. So there's the answer to part B. So I hope that makes a bit more sense now on inverse variation. And um, if you haven't seen the other video on proportion and normal variation, direct variation, then have a look at that too. Okay?